Welcome back everyone to the How to Make a Pong Clone tutorial series for Unity. This is Jonathan here. And in this video we're going to start working on getting scoring to work. So when the player uh, scores on the computer he'll gain a point and when the computer scores on the player the computer will get a point. So to do this we're going to use something called trigger colliders. Now we've already dealt with colliders quite a bit uh, but we've only dealt with collision colliders are which are when uh, the ball bounces off something. Well, trigger colliders are kind of the opposite of this. They're when the ball just passes through something, but we uh, still want something to happen. Uh, so in this case, basically what we want to do is put a trigger collider behind the player and another one behind the computer and make it so that whenever the ball hits that trigger collider, uh, the appropriate player or computer gains a point. And so the syntax we use for this is void on trigger enter 2D, and then we have to type collider 2D, and then we name a variable. I, that trigger is a common thing to call it. And this is similar to what we've already used for registering collisions. So let's get right into it. Uh, okay. So hopping over here into Unity, we are going to add a trigger collider. Now we already have some top walls and bottom walls, so maybe what we can do is just uh, duplicate one of these here. And I'm gonna call this, uh, going to call this left wall. And this box, the very important here, underneath the box collider 2D, this box that says is trigger, we want to check this. And this is all we have to do to turn it from a collision collider, which registers to collisions, to a trigger collider, which uh, doesn't register collisions at all. It just lets us hit stuff. And let's move this X over here to, uh, I should know what this is by now, right? Minus eight. And, well, really, I'm just gonna have to resize it. So I'm just gonna re do some quick resizing and then I can adjust it. And some, something you might wanna do, you don't wanna make the colliders too thin either, just in case the ball uh, is going too fast. If it's skipping, if it's going so fast it's skipping frames, there's a chance it might go through the collider. So you wanna make the collider wide enough so that it's not gonna just pass right through the, uh, through the collider. So that looks pretty good and then I can just maybe modify these numbers a bit if I need to. It's at its center point so I'm not, I'm not too concerned as long as it's standing behind there. Uh, anyways so now what I want to do is go well what let's let's think about this here. Uh, where is going to be the best place to handle scoring? Well, my thought is to actually create a completely separate game object. So I'm going to right click here and go create empty. And I'm going to call this game object score manager. And then I'm just going to reset its position to zero to be in the middle. And I'm going to move it up here underneath our main camera in the hierarchy. Now I'm going to add a component and I'm going to add a new script and I'm going to call this script score manager. And we're going to create this. It's going to appear in our assets folder, so we're going to dra drag it right away and put it into our scripts folder. Now let's go ahead and open this. Uh, here we go. So the first thing we're going to need to do is create a couple of variables. Well, actually, before we do that, what we're going to have to do is go up here into the very top, and you might remember this from console pong. Uh, when we're dealing with things like text, we need to make sure we're using UnityEngine.UI or else uh, we can't access text components. So now we're going to have to make a couple of texts and we're going to call one of them uh, public text player score and, com whoops, name my variables appropriately, computer score and hit control save and now we're going to go back into unity and we're going to dra drag and drop these so underneath our score manager it's asking us for a player score and for a computer score now we've already created those text fields so we're just going to drag them in here computer score goes to computer score and player score goes to player score now our score manager can talk to these scores uh, but of course that's not all it's going to have to do it's actually going to have to uh, register uh, at certain points. But let's think about this here. 
we know that when the ball hits the collider over here, when it hits the left wall, we're going to want to register a collision. Um, or we're going to want to register a uh, trigger event. So if we go back into our ball, just to keep the number of scripts minimized, what we can do is we can create another void under here that says void on trigger enter 2D. And as I showed you within the PowerPoint, when we uh, when we name this on trigger enter 2D, this method is going to get automatically called whenever the ball has a collision with a trigger collider. So we can put in here collider 2D, and very important to have the 2D because this is not a 3D game. And I'm going to name this trigger, and then open uh, close squiggly brackets. Now anything that we that is written in here will get called when the ball hits that collider. Of course, we want it this to be handled differently depending on which collider we're colliding with. So in this case, we're going to write if trigger dot name. Now in this case, when we were writing, when we were up here dealing with colliders for our collisions, we had to write collider dot game object dot name. We don't have to do that for triggers. We can just write trigger dot name. So if trigger dot name equals left wall then uh, basically we want to score a point for the player. So how are we going to do this? Well, in, it makes sense just to keep things organized. We don't want to keep score in our ball script. We want to keep score in our score manager script. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to create uh, a couple more variables. Well, actually, first of all, I, sh I should rename these to be keep it accurate. I should call this player score text and computer score text. And then I should create another uh, public integer under here and call this player score and computer score. And so now, we're, because I uh, renamed these, we're going to have to go reattach these again within Unity. So just the importance of naming things appropriately. So I'm going to go back to the score manager, and as you can see, it's, it says it's empty. So we can just drag those back in here. Player score text and computer score text. And also, we don't want to be able to manipulate these from the inspector over here, but we do need them to be public because we're going to be accessing them from within our ball script. So what we can do here is we can go behind this public int player score and computer score, and we can write uh, square bracket hide in inspector, close square bracket, and now if we save and we go back over to Unity, this is going to disappear over here in the inspector. So it can still be accessed, but we just don't want uh, anyone to be able to manipulate those values over here. Okay, so now what we can do is we can uh, basically manipul start manipulating these scores. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a public method over here. And we're going to say public void increase player score. And by making it public, we're going to allow this method to be called from another script. So how is that going to work? Well, first of all, our ball is going to have to be able to talk to our score manager. So we're going to have to go up here into the top of the ball script and write private score manager score manager. And if you remember from the previous, or uh, not the previous video, but a couple of videos ago, we talked about how to gain access to other scripts from within a script. So if we go into the start method over here, we can type score manager equals game object dot find object of type and then we can write score manager. So basically we're assigning this variable score manager as a delegate for this score manager script so we can manipulate this uh, score manager script from within our ball script. And now basically what we want to do is we want to say if trigger dot name equals left wall, we are going to say score manager dot increase player score. And now, oh, oh, and we have to do open close 
uh, brackets and semicolon because this is a method name. And now what we can do here is we can say uh, our player score plus plus. We're just going to increase, increment our player score. Uh, now this that, that's great. That should work, but it's all good. It's going to be happening behind the scenes. So even if we do manage to score, uh, which I'm not going to, well. It, nothing's going to happen. Nothing, nothing. Something will happen, but it's going to happen behind the scenes, so you won't actually be able to see it right now, which is not what we want. So let me just see if I can get it working, just so you can see what I'm talking about. Oh, come on, computer! Why are you being so good here right now? <laughs> okay, but if I did score, you would not see these numbers change. Uh, so what we need to be able to do here is find a way to take that value of the player score and show it with on, with on the screen. So to do this we're going to have to use something called a toString command. And so this is basically how we convert integers into string values. When we want to turn a numeric value into a text value, we can use dot toString, or another way this can be done is by typing plus quotation mark, quotation mark. So let's put this into action so you can see what I'm talking about here. So we've already assigned a player score text. Basically, what we want to be able to do is say player score text dot text. So we're taking the text value of that variable, and now we have to assign it something. But what we want to assign it to is the player score dot to string open close uh, brackets and a uh, semicolon. So now if I hit Control S for save and we go back into Unity uh, and try to score a point, let's see if that works. Let's see if the player score actually increases. And there you can see our score has gone up by one. Now, of course, that's as far as the game goes because we're not respawning the ball or anything, uh, but we have to score at a point. Okay, so does that make sense for you? Uh, let's take a look. I'm going to give you guys a challenge. Can you add the other trigger collider that allows the computer to score on the player? Then, can you write the code yourself that will increase the computer score by one whenever it scores on the player and make it so it shows on the screen? So see if you can do that and then test it all out to make sure that it actually works. Pause the video now and give that a go. Okay, welcome back. Did you actually try it? I hope you did. So let's go back into Unity and just do the exact opposite of what we already did. So we already have a left wall trigger collider. I'm just going to duplicate that, uh, turn, rename that right wall, and change its X offset to positive 9.71. That puts it on it the other side. Now we're going to go within Unity, and we're going to uh, create a uh, second method here. I'm just going to copy paste this to save time and we're going to call this increase computer score and now we're going to say computer score plus plus and computer score text dot text equals computer score dot to string. Now we're going to have to go back into the ball method and we're going to say else if trigger dot name equals right wall. Uh, I'm just going to write this out a second time and say score manager dot increase computer score open close semicolon. And one more time, let's test that out and make sure that the computer can actually score on us. And we see the computer does score on us. So we know now uh, we can score on the computer. The computer can score on us. Guys, this is looking a lot more like a real pong game. How did you guys get on in this lesson? Did it all make sense to you? Do you have any questions? Please let me know, and I will see you in the next video.